development goals as well. It's lovely to see you. Um, you take a seat over there, and I think you're on a handheld microphone there as well. Whichever one you like, grab a microphone. <laughs> so I thought we could um, focus this particular discussion on looking at the, the three big visionary goals for the global roadmap for meningitis. So that's eliminating epidemics of bacterial meningitis, reducing the, the number of cases and deaths, and then also looking at reducing, uh, it, rather improving quality of life in the aftermath of it. So on the eliminating epidemics, 2030 is only well, less than six years away. We've heard that it can be done. Do you believe that it can be done? Absolutely, yes. It can be done. Good answer. Okay, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have already stated the uh, visionary goals, the three. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have also strategic uh, goals, uh, five uh, pillars uh, in, the, in, the, in the roadmap. Uh, but there is something that gives hope. I think everybody has read that, so I don't want to repeat that. Um, especially with the vaccine. Uh, as you know, this was 13 years in the making. Uh, Indian Serum Institute and um, PATH. Um, then, on July 2023, uh, WHO pre-qualified the vaccine. And that was, by the way, for me, the happiest moment, together with the, uh, I think September or October, Kate can uh, tell me the, remind me the SAGE recommendation. I was so happy because I know what meningitis means. Um, because Ethiopia is one of the countries, the 26 countries in the meningitis belt. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the SAGE recommendation was followed by uh, Gabi's resource mobilization um, in December 2023. And then, of course, um, by, uh, I think, February, March, uh, you know, vaccines were moving early uh, 2024. And as you know, Nigeria has become you know, the first to uh, use the uh, MEN uh, 5CB. Um, it's affordable. Uh, and it's, of course, you know, a tool that uh, is really uh, uh, can make a, a, a difference. Um, and that's why I have hope uh, in that. And also the mobilization of all um, the um, institutions which I have told you, plus UNICEF and, and, and others. And I think... Um, I would like to thank President Macron and Minister Frederick and also Pastor Institute for hosting us here. It's a matter of now all of us together uh, to use the opportunity uh, and uh, eliminate uh, epidemic uh, meningitis. And I believe, I believe it's doable. So from Nigeria, now we will move into Niger and then of course we'll uh, focus on the 26 countries and, and, and beyond. So I'm really hopeful and I'm uh, a very, very happy man actually since mm -hmm. I started especially the, um, uh, you know, the vaccine, vaccine uh, rolling. Of course, vaccine is one. Uh, we have to do the early uh, detection and, and treatment. We, we have to do the uh, surveillance and we have to do, um, uh, you know, uh, taking care of uh, people who need who need care, and we have to do the advocacy in order to mobilize. So this is has become actually everybody's uh, business and prevent the preventable uh, dis, uh, deaths and uh, disability. I know another of the sort of topics that gets you quite fired up is universal health co health coverage, SDG three. Obviously, we're looking at 2030 for that as well, um, and UHC is is an absolute you know, the pivotal point of, of, of uh, the SDG3, good health and well-being. How does beating meningitis or tackling meningitis play into that ultimate goal of universal health coverage? Yeah, it's, as, as you know, an annually 2.5 million, more than 2.5 million cases, and as Minister said, uh, more than 200, I think 30,000 is, um, this is significant. Mm. Um, and 
The main focus of the SDGs is to reduce uh, preventable uh, diseases and, and, and diseases. And this is a major uh, disease that, that, that kills and also uh, disables. So um, whatever we do should be part of the uh, UHC, especially part of the primary health care. By the way, the five pillars especially can be done better if they're integrated in the primary health care. So what we're saying is meningitis the fight can bring opportunities to the primary health care, and the primary health care will be an opportunity for meningitis, meaning uh, it has to be integral part of what we, what we do. And it can help us uh, to, to, to achieve the um, UHC goals of the SDG. Uh, public and private partnerships are also something that you, you, you've spoken about at length in the past before. We're going to have a big discussion later about sort of the multi-stakeholder nature of, of this, this effort to defeat meningitis. But what would you say to sort of the, the partners in the room today about the momentum needed in those partnerships to work together in order to actually deliver on this goal? Yeah, I think to all partners now is the time. I think we have been working together to make this uh, happen, and we have clear visionary goals, clear um, strategic goals, clear roadmap, uh, and we know what we want, and we know how to, to achieve it. So uh, my message is now is the time to, to hit hard and make a difference. And, um, you know, by 2023 to um, uh, achieve the goals we have, we have set in, in, st in terms of elimination, in terms of uh, reducing uh, disease and, 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 and death. And I believe, I believe uh, it's doable. So that's the message I have. Let's be more aggressive. And mm. uh, as we have done, uh, let's stay united and, 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 and push. Uh, and the private sector, by the way, on the SDGs cannot be achieved, not only just meningitis, uh, all the goals we have cannot be achieved without the partnership of governments, civil society, the private sector, the academic institutions, NGOs, foundations, and all, all players. So we have to continue to, 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 to work uh, together. The third visionary goal for this global roadmap is about improving quality of life and reducing disabilities um, in the aftermath of meningitis. Paris is, of course, playing such a massive role this summer with the, with the Olympics and the Paralympics as well. How important do you think sport is in raising awareness of not only deadly diseases but also debilitating d diseases and how to not only you know, survive but thrive in the aftermath? Yeah. Um, as part of our WHO transformation, by the way, partnership is central, one of the uh, thematic areas we have identified. And it's because of the partnership now we have um, established the Civil Society uh, Commission and the Youth Council, but partnership is beyond. And we have also decided to partner with uh, you know, sports institutions like FIFA, for instance. Uh, we signed agreement in 2019 for the first time. Mm -hmm. And ever since, we worked very closely together. In 2020, we signed agreement with International Olympic Committee. In 2021, with Paralympics. So we have relationship with all of them. And especially with Paris Olympic, IOC and Paralympics are central. And we have already an agreement and we have been in partnership. And we will use the Paris um, Olympic actually to increase awareness, what meningitis means. Um, but not only that, to mobilize uh, support. But at the same time, um, uh, of course, in Paralympics, uh, many who have been affected by meningitis will, will participate. And to show that disability is another part, another type of ability, as they say. And I heard a quote, I think, from Andrea, who was affected by meningitis, who says, the limits are actually in our mind. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we can use that platform to reach billions. And that's why, by the way, we started the relationship with all the uh, 
uh, important global institutions, and uh, we work very closely with all with all three. And this platform, not only for meningitis, by the way, we will use it to fight non-communicable diseases, to fight other uh, major uh, diseases uh, as well. And looking forward to uh, the Paris Olympic, I, I will be here. I have already <laughs> confirmed my participation to Thomas Bach, and he's expecting me. And uh, look forward to using that opportunity, actually, to um, uh, to invest uh, in, in the fight against uh, uh, meningitis and look forward to it. Well, we're so thrilled that you have um, found the time to be with us here today. So thank you very, very much. Thank Dr. you, Anna. Thank you. Very nice to meet you again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a very big thank you again to, um, to DG Tedros. Um, so a key element of uh, today's meeting is, of course, the launch of the investment case as well. And um, so to learn more about that and learn more specifically about this.